In this video, we're going to be sharing a taste of the presentation that Dr. Duncan French did at the Boxing Science Conference back in April. Duncan is a Vice President of Performance at the UFC Performance Institute. Duncan presents translating athletic qualities to MMA and combat sports. And this presentation is themed around how the UFC Performance Institute transfer generic and very sport specific training into fast and explosive actions that look more like the sport of MMA and combat sports. And in this video, Duncan's particularly talking about the punch specific and fight specific exercises that they use at the Performance Institute in Las Vegas. So let's crack on with the video. And like I say, if you're interested in the Boxing Science Online Conference, please visit the link in the description for more details. And also don't miss out on our early bird discount. So when we start to talk about training transfer, um, it's, it's, it's tough for us all guys, right? And girls, it's, it, it's tough because we're trying to determine if an improvement in skill is actually happening because of an improvement in an exercise on the court, in the, in the gym, in the ring, wherever it may be. But it can be done. So, you know, this is a simple um, process that, that, that I did um, with some of our exercises, looking at an evaluation of peak impact force. All right. So I basically used a simple um, accelerometer, looked at peak impact force of a punch, of a striking, you know, in standing combat. And then I took a, a variety of different exercises and just correlated the outcome. All right. Is the higher, someone's highest performance in, a, in this particular exercise color, col correlated with the outcome in, in the skill itself? All right. So now I can absolutely say, all right, if we're going to be super specific for a punch, our land, like our landmine press release is going to be the best way to do it. We still snatch, we still do bench press, we still do like squat snatches, but we know that the transference of those, diff, those exercises is actually very poor compared to the, the things that are higher up on this, on this table are shown in front of you. So you can really start to get into the conversation of like, are we, are we doing what we're meant to be doing in training? All right. This three-step process of, of kind of exercise prescription is what you know what, what I've you know historically um, worked with. And again, I help a, a lot of um, Chris McLeod from the UFC was excuse me from the EIS was was someone that I worked with back in the day very closely on on the development of this. So I, I give a lot of attribute to Chris for this. Um, but again, looking at these three eyes of identify what you're trying to do implement different strategies and then make sure you're impacting particular factors. The very simple way um, to show that. So again, coming back to a 35,000 foot kind of perspective, here's what I developed for ourselves at the UFC to start to interrogate our planning and programming approach, right? We've got task outcomes that are very fixed in nature, sitting on a, well, like kicking a, striking a football, or let's make it, I, I use a punch or like a low kick, a low leg kick, right? So a low leg kick is a very fixed outcome, but a low leg kick can also be a high leg kick, right? So it can become flexible. So we, we have certain fixed outcomes and we have certain flexible outcomes that can change across time. And within each of the factors of general preparatory work, specific prep, specific development and competition, we can start to highlight whether they've got global, local or structural factors and when we should be doing those different things. All right. It's, it's, it's a critical part of making sure that you're doing what you should be doing when you should be doing it. And I think, you know, when, when, when we, as, let's be honest, as strength and conditioning coaches, we all get excited about our programming strategy, right? Um, but this is a way to, uh, you know, to, to formalize which type of drills you should be using and when and how impactful they, they, they can be to, to the outcome. Again, I, like, so, you know, so, you know, here's Jojo. She, she's doing a, you know, a, a single leg step up with kettlebell and with a leg kick. Like, like what, what is that? Is that, is that a, um, is that a general preparatory exercise? Is that a specific preparatory exercise? A specific development? Is it competition exercise? What do you guys think that is? I look at it and I would say that that's a general prep exercise. 
All right. Yeah, she she she's kicking a leg out. All right, which makes it look like like um, you know a leg kick, but in no way, shape, or form does that resemble how she would really kick a leg, like kicking competition. So for me, this becomes a general prep exercise that we use in a motivational tool of making a leg kick. But all the work is on that stance leg. All right, because we're using a loaded you know unilateral kettlebell step up that ultimately is driving a general prep response that is structural in nature. I would argue that there's probably little kind of sport-specific relationship in that. Same thing here. Now, I know you all do this, all right, but different ways of doing this drill, all right? Here's a slow, static landmine press, all right? Again, does this resemble what happens in competition? Is it crossover into competition using this drill? You can argue against me, but again, I would say that, that the way that that's been presented is a general preparation exercise. That's purely structural and functional in nature. There's probably very little inter or intramuscular coordination or motor skill that is related to competition itself. This one's an easy one, all right? I mean, ultimately, you know, this is like the most general preparatory work you can get in terms of neck strengthening. Then we start to get a little bit more funky, right? So. You know, here we've got a Kaiser rotational um, wood chop. What do we think about this? Specific prep, specific development, competition, general prep work. Again, for me, I would start to say now we're getting into the realms of specific preparatory exercises. I can start to argue that, you know, the, the torso control and the hip work that's being challenged here, he's doing a particular exercise that has got multiple factors, but we might be using it for something that's not a, a, a discreetly obvious. Same thing over here. I know, again, you guys all do this. Um, you know, supine landmine um, med ball throws. What do you think about those? Again, for me, specific prep work. <laughs> Same with our um, our mace work. Okay, so our long maces. All right, what are we doing this for? The way that he throws a punch, the way that he makes a kick, the way that he does a, a double leg takedown in wrestling, the way that he holds himself against the cage. No, none of that. It doesn't, it doesn't resemble any of that in any way, shape or form, but the inter intermuscular contractions around the start of the spine and the stability that that creates potentially gives us the argument. All right, well, that's got some amount of sports specific um, tissue specificity to it. They would make it a specific preparatory exercise. You see where I'm going with this, right? I mean, ultimately, well, excuse me. Now we really start to get into stuff that looks like fighting, all right? So when do I program this? Is there a different time in my program that I should be putting this, or do I just knock this out from day one? It's, it's sports-specific, day one, let's get after it. You know, this is clearly specific development work, okay? Clearly specific development. Yeah. Same with this one. You know, I on here is doing something that doesn't necessarily um, look like, you know, striking, but it might resemble, you know, a judo hip throw or the way he controls his hips and the foot movement um, might be really important for our sport. So, again, we can start to potentially say that's a specific development drill and so on and so forth, right? So when we come back to this slide right here, excuse me, we can start to take every example that you have in your portfolio and start to overlay it and say, well, where, where, where should these exercises and drills go in the bigger scheme of things? I went through a, a pretty extensive kind of number of considerations, everything from, you know, the competition and, and how you define competition through to how you evaluate individuals and how does the body, you know, absorb training for want of a better term and that is partly um, by changing systems and changing physiology and changing biology and it's partly by you know nervous system activation in, in terms of skill acquisition and how the body learns new skills so the boxing science conference is is really leading the way in, in helping kind of educate and disseminate information and bring a community together that are all interested in you know, helping the fighters that they work with, but, but to do that in a, a really effective fashion.